You too, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this, we've got the Carbon Z Cessna 150 2.1 meter. This thing is humongous. And yes, it has a tail dragger on it. And yes, it has the mains up here, but there's no nose gear because it's not a tricycle. And where the heck are we right now? I had somebody ask us, they said, remember when you first moved into your property, into your house, you had flown in the backyard, okay? Our backyard has become the uh, playground for the children and off-camera items. <laughs> so yes, I know you guys aren't here for our family stuff, but we're just gonna show you real quick. This is why we don't film back here. We have the chicken coop, less the chickens. chickens. They have all died or been eaten. Then we have a trampoline. This is what children do. And then we have this thing. It's a climbing dome. And then we have that thing, which is a pool. <laughs> so yeah. And a frisbee golf basket. So, but that does not mean that we aren't going to be flying around here. So we figured we'd take this dainty little creature right here and hopefully do some interesting flying here. So without further ado, camera crew, I trust you. This will be more mobile than usual. <laughs> oh, good. So without further ado, this plane is super capable and we're gonna showcase some of those capabilities today, starting right here. And you're probably wondering, Brian, why are you flying right here? Why aren't you using your beautiful runway? Well, the reason we're not using our beautiful runway right now is because our runway is under maintenance. Mm -hmm. We are in the bowl right now. This is an angle, a point of view that you guys almost never get to see and we often don't fly here, at least not publicly. That is where we flew the Optera and the P-40. And what else did we fly back there? The, v, the V-900, but not the V-1200. And so, there you have it, guys. People were asking, and so now you get what you asked for which is flying in the back. So you get where you are? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to get a couple of different strange angles here. So this is a pretty big plane for back here. It is quite tight back here. And what I need to do is showcase its awesomeness, which means I'm gonna to have to do a few landings. And uh, this becomes a skill and fun thing for me. You wanna go up to the top of that hill there and mm -hmm. then you'll get a good angle on what's going on. And then we will show you what's going on with the uh, runway too. That's where I wanna to try to land, okay? okay? I might come in from the other angle if you can just kind of stay with it. Okay. So this is kind of off to the side. You guys are probably connecting the dots now if you're not intimately familiar with the layout. So that's full reverse thrust. As you can see, that was not a very big place we did that in, okay? So forward thrust here. You're not gonna do that with the, uh, with the old carbon Z Cessna 150. Not that you would want to. In case you guys were wondering where our septic lids are, they're right there. I just flew <laughs> around in a circle. That's uh, where the real magic happens. Oh, there's a manned aircraft way up there. That's pretty cool. Out of the flaps. Now we're out over the road. Coming back down, we'll do a high speed pass. Thirty percent throttle there. Backed it off to about fifteen. There we go. No reverse thrust on that one. As you can see, we get a bit of a hill here. Oh, we're about to tip over. Okay, here we go. Another take off. Nice, uh, nice, gentle climb there. 
into the hammerhead. <laughs> we'll just hang out there for a minute or two. It's 5006S, 30C, nothing special. Just the standard ones we've been using for all of our planes that are in the 6S family for a long time. Gosh, I love these packs, they're so good. Man, that looks good against the trees. It finally calmed down for us. And of course, what is going on? Where is Alfred Hitchcock? What are we in the birds here? I don't know if they can see him. I don't know if you can see it, but there's about a thousand birds all of a sudden. So all I can say is I hope this guy, I hope this pilot packed a lunch because he probably just lost it. <laughs> Oh, by the way, in case you guys were wondering, I know this is kind of like the whole family update today. Let's fly over the Starlink. See if we lose signal. You ready? Oh, I didn't go right over it. You're right, I didn't want to lose signal. So if you guys were wondering, we live out in the sticks. Obviously, that's how we can fly where we fly. Obviously, we're not in right next to an airport or helipad or anything like this. We do see lots of crop dusting activity going on here. But we are out in the middle of nowhere and that's the way we like it. And so that means our internet comes at a premium. Mm -hmm. And now that we have Starlink, it has much improved our lives to similar to what we had in town at our previous residence. Look at all those birds. I know. That is so stinking weird. It's like a feeding frenzy. Ten, nine, eight, There's our timer. Seven, six, five, Guys, look at the capability on that thing. That is just amazing. And then safe. Safe mode. Safe mode. We are technically out of time now. So let's uh Let's try a uh, landing just for fun here. We'll just do a nice relaxing landing. Nothing super crazy going on. Getting over the power lines now. Go in by the hay. And then touch down here. And just kind of taxi it down. So guys, we haven't shown you much back here because as you can see, it's a bit of a minefield back here now. If you want to keep taxiing with me there, camera crew. This is where we used to store our hay last season and we got the grass all back up to back up the snuff and then this little area over here has really just kind of filled up with stuff and the kids use this area but i think what we're going to do is we'll take off and we'll give you a couple of passes through this clearing next to the trees okay um you can obviously hear the uh, servos not quite over the truck or whatever that's going by but the servos on this cessna are so loud it's um very strange. And as you can see, the tail dragger has been working just fine. Mm -hmm. So full up elevator and we're gonna double back around. We'll probably take off and then come back at us. And we have a panther that's about to attack us over here. You see this? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> distracted the cat. Let me take about 10 steps back toward where I'm standing for me. Thank you. Now we're up in front of the house. That's where the runway is. Eagle killing zone is on my left wing. And we're just over the tree line there. You guys don't get a scale for how small or large this property is often, but this is kind of what we're doing here today is just kind of getting you reappraised with the landscape because sometimes it's fun to know where you're flying. Take off flaps, 100% throttle. Now, I don't know if you guys can see out of my left wing there, right below me, we got a large dead tree. One of our favorites. She'll probably be coming down here pretty quick, which is very unfortunate. Last time we had a tree like that died, we ended up with a bridge. Mm -hmm. But we don't want that tree to die, and so we're gonna give it one more season and it's probably gonna come down after that. But then we'll have a nice pass through there. This is another spot, this is where I take off and fly over. That spot there, and then I'll go around full loop back toward us. We've done a couple of flights in this area, not through that hole in that exact position. But yeah, we just love it here, folks. It's been 
Really, really exciting to be able to share our experience in this property so far. We've only got two years here, camera crew. I'm gonna probably put it down if you could kind of make your way back to where we were. The Carbon Z Cub is a great plane and I love flying it. Back up toward the house if you could. But the Carbon Z Cessna 150 is just really, really, really impressive, guys. The tail dragger just makes it more of a bush plane. And we've been super happy with it so far. And I love flying these planes. These Carbon Zs are great. I'm gonna put this down here and then we'll check our voltages. Okay, we used thrust reverse that time. So just so you guys know the timing, we're at about three minutes, 51, 52, 53. So let's just call it four minutes past six. So that was 10 minutes of flight time. And we are up to about 22.6 volts total on the nominal voltage or about 3.78. So you could easily call that a fully spent battery. Um, I would normally fly a little bit longer, but just given the surroundings and things like that, we're gonna not push it. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna take a little walk with the Cessna and we'll show you what we were talking about up front. All right, so we're just gonna taxi back up front here. Just show you how nice this thing handles. This grass has not been manicured or cut in over a week. We put 1,200 pounds of fertilizer, 400 pounds of gypsum, and this, this, this grass has seen a lot of rain actually last night. Look at this hill, guys. Let's see if we can do it. That is a nasty hill. So just so you guys understand, this plane is just super, super good on handling. And this is what we've been doing. Yes, this is lame. I know. Mm -hmm. That's part of the reason why you didn't see any of it. Not only was it lame, but it was extremely huge pain in the butt. Yeah. We've been sealing the cracks on our concrete. And as you can see, it's still kind of wet and we have a tractor out here blocking the driveway and it's got notes in it that say stop, fresh concrete sealant and things like this. So we can't even drive out unless there was an emergency because we would tear this stuff up because it takes like 25 hours to skin coat and then I think it's gonna be like seven days to full, full cure, yeah. which is terrible. Yeah. But luckily, we've got the Cessna 150T, which does just fine with or without a runway. Yep. And uh, as soon as all these, and you can see the kids came out and helped us mark all these little pits and things like this. This is These are some of the, the off-camera items that you don't get to see on Brian Phillips RC. <laughs> um, but this project was terrible. It was one of the worst that I've ever dragged the, ca the camera crew into. The kids and I were up until midnight stuffing foam into the, uh, the foam rope. It's three eighths inch roping into the cracks. And that's backer so that you can then put this caulk in, except it's like runny and it's very thin. And it's like the most stressful thing you've ever done because you don't want it to look like crap. And yet we still have quite a bit that does look a little bit like that, unfortunately. Um, but anyway, in case you were wondering why there was a little bit gap of production, that's exactly <laughs> what was going on. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to take off with this, give a couple of circuits and then land it over here and we'll call it quits. What do you think? Okay. We've got 3.8 volts still. Let's see what we can get out of this thing. We actually go back up, taxi back over to the other side. This plane just does so stinking good in the off-road conditions that it's just hard not to showcase it. I'm going to totally get tempted to land on the runway and I'm not going to do it, okay? Where, where are we standing? Right where we are. Okay. This thing just does it. Should we come in next to the Coyote? What do you think, camera crew? Okay. Can I handle it? Uh, I hope so. If I, if I hit the window and break it, who am I going to call? West Bend? Yep. <laughs> There we go, guys. No touch and go for you. Right down to our left. You good? Mm -hmm. 
Guys, this plane, it's a joy to fly. We haven't gotten any time with it in the calm and I'm just so happy we finally got a little bit. It is so beautiful and striking up in the sky. Just, just look at that thing. Have to get a cornhole in. All right, camera crew. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go ahead and try to put it down in the front yard if I can get a, a good approach going. Okay. You good where you are? Yep. You have any room to take a step toward the building just in case? Yeah. All heck brace loose? Yep. Okay. Good job. There it is, guys. Okay, so we're at 3.65 volts. We have the Panther trying to attack the plane. The cats love this plane. I don't know if you guys have gotten this plane yet, but the cats by far, bar none, hands down, this is the most attracted they've ever been to any of my electronic devices. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Maybe it's the frequency of the hum on the, the servos, or if it's out. just the shape or size, or maybe it reminds them of an old girlfriend in another life. <laughs> All I can say is I'm also attracted to it. Sorry, hon. Uh, it's beautiful. Wow. So anyway, if you haven't already bought this thing, if you're thinking about it, if you're on the fence, the Carbon Z Cub, great plane. The Carbon Z Cessna 150T, also great plane. The Draco, also great. So people have been asking me kind of repeatedly, which one should I buy? Which one should I buy? And I keep coming back to, it depends on what you're looking for. Because let's be honest, guys, this plane is not near as beautiful as the Draco. Okay, I'm just gonna say that right now. The Draco is way more beautiful. The Draco breaks down very easy. This breaks down very easy. The Carbon Z Cub, um, the, it breaks down easy, but not quite as easy as this or the Draco. The Draco is the easiest to break down. It's also smaller. It's a one, it's, it's, it's about 0.1 meters less. These are both uh, 2.125 or 33 meters, I think the Carbon Z Cub and the Carbon uh, Cessna 150. So they're both great sizes. They're very striking. I mean, 84 inches is big, guys. I mean, I'm 6'1", 6'3", uh, if I'm buying life insurance. And it's just, it's really, it's a big plane. And it's very fun. It flies super fantastic. If you fly in calm weather like this, it is just gonna be absolutely rock solid. And I don't know if you guys already caught it, but we did an unbox. Uh, build radio setup and maiden flights and we did those in wind so that means it's not like this thing is only capable of flying in calm same is true for the draco same is true for the carbon z cub ss 2.1 um, so they're all good choices really it comes back to budget and how you want it to look if you don't like the draco then don't buy the draco don't buy it just because you want to say you had it i don't know anybody who's done that but i'm sure that there's somebody out there that's saying I just need to satisfy my own curiosity. Fine, borrow it from a friend. Uh, but the thing is, if you love the Cessna 150 body style, get the Cessna. If you love the Carbon, the carbon Cub SS, get that. Uh, if you love the Draco, get that. They're all equally great. Um, I think technically the Carbon Cub SS is the cheapest of the lot. I like that plane the most. Here's why because I'm partial to, to the Carbon Cub SS. I like the plane. Uh, do I like it better than this one? Probably not, because this one's new. I haven't played with it as much. Uh, does that make this better than the Draco? No, but do I like it better than the Draco right this second? Maybe just because it's new. Um, I hate this to be such a cop-out, but really it's like, you know, in this hobby, there's a lot of it. Whatever's new in your life is what you like the best. It's not that I don't like the 70 millimeter F-16 or the 80 millimeter F-16. It's just the 80s new. That's my newest thing. It's my biggest challenge right now. So it's a big plane for me. That doesn't mean that the uh, F-18 is bad uh, in the 80 millimeter platform. I just, it's just not the new plane. So it's not gonna be on the top of the list. So that being said, if, you, if you're even on the fence about it, hopefully this video answers a few questions about our driveway, because I knew you were, it's lingering questions. Um, also, if you wanted to know what was going on in the backyard, because it's obviously on the tip top of your brain, uh, now you know. But at the end of the day, now you can answer some questions about this. And yes, if you thrust reverse this thing backward, 
you're probably gonna tangle up your tail gear and you will have problems with the springs. They'll twist, they'll stretch, you'll have problems. So if you hope to have a good experience with this and you're thrust reversing, I would highly recommend against it uh, for most reasons, because don't back up with this plane, you're gonna have problems. The Draco does a lot better backing up backward. Just so you guys know, that's full disclosure. Uh, is that a deal breaker for this plane? For me, heck no, are you kidding? Uh, neither is it a deal breaker that these screws are horrible on the tail dragger assembly. That's not a deal breaker. Or the fact that the two screws that hold this cowl on right here and right here are terrible. I don't care, it's not that big a deal. This is a big plane, there's a lot of pieces that go into it. And if it takes me an extra 15 minutes to replace two screws on the nose cowling, uh, or the nose, the cowl, and then two screws on the tail dragger, I'm fine with that. That's a fair trade off for me. At that price point, it's a little frustrating, but at the same time, not a deal breaker. Same thing with every other plane we've built. There's not always a sticking point, but the Carbon Z Cub, one of my favorite planes, has similar sticking points on the wheel collars. So what are you gonna do? It's like, you know, Horizon decided not to get that one right. I don't know why they haven't fixed it, but they didn't, so that's up to them. This plane is still awesome, and I still recommend you buy it. Okay, any other thoughts, camera crew? It's, it's a cool plane to watch. It's, it's impressive. The big planes are just Yeah, fun. It's, there's just something more to them. And features too, this one has LEDs. You know, yep, if you're looking that's at- right. I always forget options, that. Yep. Yep. But it's also more expensive. Right. So. so if it's if it's more expensive and that's an off put for you, then go with the Carbon Z Cub. Again, at that price point, I think it should have LEDs. But again, I wasn't exactly in the round table meeting at Horizon Hobby. Okay. They didn't ask my opinion. Nope. I'm just here to tell you what I think about them and bring you the uh, closest to the full picture that I can bring. And that's all shaped in the experience that I've had and Megan and I have had together. So we're not here to bring you every possible detail about every plane, but we want you to know that within the scope of what we've done in our career in the RC world, this is a great plane. And we've seen a lot, guys. Yeah. We've seen a lot. And we're getting new ones. In fact, we have new stuff right now that we gotta get to, which is why we're about to wrap this video up. Which, by the way, best audience in YouTube history here on Brian Phillips RC. Occasionally, we get audience members that ask us questions like, um, challenging our authenticity. We are extremely authentic on this channel and we want you guys to know that when we, when we say buy this plane, we mean it. It's good. Buy it for the reasons that we outlined. If you disagree with our analysis, then don't buy that one. Buy something else. In fact, we have links for tons of them down below. This plane included, this battery included, which is a 6S uh, 5000 milliamp hour 30C Smart Pack Gen 2 in this case. And yes, we do have smart telemetry data, which is really cool. It's probably gonna be kind of hard to see with the glare. But guys, we have so much stuff on telemetry that we used to never have. And to be honest with you, for many, it's gonna be overwhelming, okay? Really? This is what I demand on telemetry, Horizon, if you're listening, which I, I doubt you are. This is what I demand. Percentage of voltage on my pack, nominal. Balance cells, I can do without, that's fine, I don't need them. I just need nominal pack voltage, and that's it. Everything else, I don't care about. Many, many, many of you are gonna scream, I know, I want temperature of the BEC, and I want this and that, and then whatever. Okay, fine. I want voltage pack uh, of the pack, because then I know how long I've got to go to fly. Timers are nice, but you can see there's a wild variance in times, especially on a plane like this, because you may go around flying this like a general aviation Cessna, or you may go around flying this like an insane UFO from some other planet, and that's up to you. So we love the freedom that this RC aviation gives us in our lives, and we wanna share it with you guys. So definitely check down below. The links in the description below will help you to buy this. You'll be supporting our channel. Those small proceeds that these guys pay us when you buy from them cost you nothing, and it gets us a small commission that runs our channel. So that finances all the stuff we're doing right now, and we really appreciate that. Now, if you just, hate that whole concept and you don't like it and you think it like muddies the waters like I'm somehow lying to you about how awesome this plane is because that would really make sense since I was doing Horizon for five years before that. Um, anyway, if you don't like that, we have Patreon and we have PayPal. If you don't like fees for Patreon, we have PayPal. There's no fees. Friends and family, it's totally free. 100% of the money you guys give goes straight to us. So we just opened those doors up here within the last six months or so. We have supporters in all three categories and we really from the bottom of our hearts, I want to thank you guys.
for doing that. So stay tuned. We have so much more coming here on Brian Phillips RC as soon as our runway dries.